Hello everyone, this is Rental again, trying again to get past this level. It's been a while since I worked on this Let's Play, so to remind everyone, this is Outpost 2. It is the Plymouth Campaign. I believe it's on normal difficulty. Unless I chickened out and did easy, but either way. <laughs> I have a little bit of time, so I'm going to try to record this and see if how far I can get. There we go. So I don't remember what all I said last time. Uh, this is a really good game. <laughs> okay, let's start over on that. This is by far one of my favorite games from my childhood. It came out in 1997. And for the time, these graphics were amazing. But by today's standard, they're probably considered pretty low. And what we need to do right now is get up the objectives. We need to have 12 scientists, 22 workers, and 32 children, which we don't have a lot of control over at the moment. See, we have 29 children, so that will help us out a little bit. Build up actually some research here. Oh, a lot of weird noises in the background going on. Unfortunately, I don't have a little place I can go away to hide to record things, so I have to do it wherever I get space, whenever I have time. And of course, I'm watching three dogs at the same time as doing this. Ah. Little tiny dogs. <laughs> hey, lay down. Be a good, good doggy. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was I saying with this? Last time I was trying this, I ended up going over time and got hit by, volcan uh, by lava. And then I also did a multiplayer game with Highlander. And that did not turn out so well for me, but he was using a lot of that time to try to Help me learn some of the tactics that better, well, people who are better at it. Usually when I play, it's usually when I play, it's not quite as uh, what's the word I want before. Offensively, I tend to play very defensively, and when I'm in a team, that works out pretty well for myself, anyway. I usually get a lot of metal production up and build up units to defend myself. And then once the others start attacking, I'll usually try to find a little way to sneak in a small attack that does the most damage possible. Now you can't see any of the combat units on this level. I don't remember what level. Well, you know, this is the level where you start seeing the very basic ones. Mm, correction on that. But you don't really get into really you don't really get into any major combat until much later in the game, which kind of helps you learn how to play really. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to get as much research going at, it, at the same time as possible. You have certain objective research things that you have to do, which you can, they don't have to do anything beyond that, but I tend to prefer to get as much done as possible as early as possible. And by getting them done earlier, it just makes it easier for you later on. It's all power related, so that's good to know. You have to try to be as quick as possible when doing this. If you're too slow, then of course you're just going to get buried in lava like I did. Oh, and Tom just threw up a little bit in his own mouth.
right now I'm using a lot of the hotkeys. If you look at the menu while I'm going through things, you'll see certain letters have an underline and they're red. Those are the keys that you can hit real quick to do the same action as if you clicked on the button. Which is very helpful when you're getting when you when you're used to using them real quickly. There's some people who can go through them extremely fast. I can't do it all that fast, but oh goodness. <laughs> some people get really fast with it and they can go through menus like crazy. So yeah, this is probably real fun watching right now. It's going a little bit slower than I'm used to. Uh, because I'm going to lower the gain speed just a little bit. I'm used to playing it all the way at 10, but I'm also not used to talking at the same time. Well, maybe if I slow it down a little bit, I'll be able to talk a little bit more. As I said when I did my little introductory video that I uploaded first, my main point of me doing this is to try to get more used to talking in general. If I'm ta when I'm typing, I'm really quick at thinking. I can get the words out pretty quickly, and I seem to be very. Uh, I'm trying to think of the right word now. I seem to be very good uh, with my diction that way. But when it comes to actual talking, my brain slows down quite a bit. So I figure if I get more experience talking in. Maybe then I'll be able to go as quickly as I can with typing. The biggest problem is that I like to use a lot of bigger words. Not to try to sound smart, it's just that they express what I'm thinking a lot better. That's one mistake that a lot of people make a lot. Uh, a lot of people make the mistake that if someone's using big words, they're trying to sound smarter than they are. And with me, that's not the case. I don't even know the full extent of my intelligence. I don't want to know it. I find that a very dangerous thing to know. And if I use big words, it's just because that's what expresses what I'm thinking the best. That one's damaged, so I'll go ahead and switch it back. I try to avoid the electrical storms. Some of them do very little damage, other ones do a lot of damage, and there's no way to tell the difference between which one's going to do that. With the other disasters in the game, like you've seen, there are seismic events, which are earthquakes, but since this isn't Earth, they can't call them earthquakes. And volcanic eruptions. There's also uh, tornadoes and meteors that come in. I'm not quite sure how far into the game that starts. But with the meteors, it's pretty obvious how big that's going to be. With the volcanoes, it's pretty obvious how big that's going to be because a bigger volcano is going to have more spread than a smaller one. But everything else, it all it's all the same size, so it's hard to determine just by looking at it how much damage it can do. At the very least, to get through this. Though. Right now, I'm using Gold Wave to record the audio because I don't know how long this will take me, and I know that after 15 minutes, Camtasia's built-in audio recorder fails on me. I don't know what's going on with that. Don't know if it's just my computer or what, but I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with keeping track of time while I'm recording because. That just isn't fun for me. <laughs> None of this early stuff isn't all that fun to get into, but once you get into later game, then you start get into later game, start getting more into the you know keeping your tactics and say, okay, this attack's gonna come from here, or I have to breach this defense. So that's when it's really fun for me. I really enjoy strategy. Twenty-six children. Ooh, that's not going to do very good for me. I hate to use the resources for something as useless as this, but I might have no choice right now. Oh, 
doing this? Whoa, what? No, I didn't even pay attention to that. So there's three, no, four basic resources in this game. There's power, which you have to generate yourself. There's metal, which you have to mine up, and it comes in two varieties, but we'll cover that later. There's food, and there's colonists. Now, metals, of course, you mine out of the ground. And that's why I have this common ore mine here. And food, you produce yourself in the agronomes. They're the only structure that can produce food. Power, right now, is produced in tokenet. Whoa, what the heck was that sound? <laughs> okay, that was random. But with power, you get the token Mac, which is the same across both colonies. And each colony has their own things other than that. And both of them have solar power, which you don't get until you get into the space program. The communication cell, not operational, that has to do with the storyline. You can't ever do anything with that. Um, <clears throat> Population is controlled through the nursery for children and workers, and the university to be able to train scientists. You can only get scientists by training them from the workers that are available, and they're only available if there's <coughs> excess workers. Each building takes a different amount of people. The university takes two scientists. The nursery takes a scientist and a worker, and so on and so forth. And you really have to start balancing out how you spread everything around. Right, right now I have two labs up because I want to get as much research done as possible. But that's why it's a bad idea right there. I'm probably going to lose again. Oh yeah, there's no way I'm going to get all this done in time. Oh well. Yeah, I'm going to lose again. But let's see, just in case. I'm usually not this slow. I'm usually much. Oh, I know it's okay. Well, since I know that I'm not going to win this one, I'm going to reload from the beginning. Okay, and now, I know exactly what I'm doing wrong. See, the major part of this that's. A main part, no, main part of the strategy of this game is determining what order to do research in when you have it available. In multiplayer, the order that you do research in is a huge thing. If you do one piece of research out of order, the other person is going to get weapons first. They're going to have the resources available first, and Unless you're on a team and your teammates are picking up the slack that way, you don't have the chance of winning. Well, unless they're like me and tend not to go on the offensive right away. <laughs> yeah, I was talking about resources, wasn't I? Well, as I mentioned, common metals is one form of metal resource. The other one is rare metals, which you don't get into until later in the game. I believe it's not until two more missions. Well, it's this mission, then a reconnaissance mission, and then that la next mission after that, you get the option to research the, oh, well, you don't get the option, is required, but you research the ability to mine rare ores. And the big thing, mistake that I make a lot is that I tend to just build willy-nilly. I, I, I cluster build like I am right here. And I am using my hand as if you guys can see what I'm doing. But a lot of the time you want to try to spread out a bit more. You get some structures that if they explode, they'll destroy everything about, around them very easily. Other ones eh, might do a little bit of damage. With these token maps, you really want them further away, but this is just a little, you know, get our resources up and stuff type 
level, so you want to keep everything as close as possible. And a big problem with building clustered in like, oh, well, with any type of building is before you have the ability to, uh, what would I say? <laughs> okay, okay, so many messages coming in. Before you have the ability to see where the rare ore is, like I know that this beacon right here is called metals because I don't have rare ore research, so it's not going to show me any rare ore, rare ore, uh, rare ore beacons. So there's always a chance that you're going to build right on top of a beacon. And it's always the three bar that you build on top of. Oh, oh did I explain this before? Well, when you survey a beacon, I'll go ahead and pull this guy up so you can see it. You survey a beacon, when you first look at it, you just have that one bar that's white. You survey it and it can be one bar, two bar, or three bar. And this tells you what, pro tells you what the yield amount is going to be. One bar is very low yield, three bar is the highest yield you can get. And the more three bar mines you have, the better off you're going to be. It's very hard to compensate for having nothing but one bar mines. And you can stack the mines with as many smelters as you want. It still doesn't change the fact that you're at a disadvantage to someone who has three bar mines. And when it comes to, and this is actually something that a lot of people overlook from what I've seen. If you look at the smelter, there are only these six positions that you can, you know, it's five positions that you can go into, but there's a six position if you can count the dock. So you never want to really, you really never want to have more than just the five there. Any more than that, and if your smelter gets full, well, you're screwed over because your vehicles can't move on their own. Ooh, that was a down. Okay, you didn't get damaged. But the mine has a full six spots around it. So, three, yeah, six spots around it. So you can fit a lot more around it by building more smelters. So the best thing that you can do in a multiplayer game, if you have the time to be able to do it, is to build six smelters around each one of your mines. You have one carpet truck going between the mine and each smelter. It will save you a lot of time overall for metal production. Okay, I gotta stop hitting the spacebar when I hear those messages. Just slow it down. Okay, objectives. You need to build smelter as well, okay. These will be damaged because there was the side of the Oh, another Lamar, wow. That's unusual. A lot of this, a lot of the early missions are very slow paced like this. Okay, it's, and you have to deal with it simply because that's the way the game is, but later missions, you, know, you really have to try to speed up your thought process with things. Okay, the population is correct right now. Okay, the factory's not done yet, but it's a lot better off than it was last time. Now, 
a big mistake I made was building that second standard lab the last time, or in that previous attempt there. When you have enough scientists, it's worth it. If you have more scientists than the maximum scientists that you can have on a research project, it's worth it to have a second laboratory to have it going on. But when you don't even have enough to fill it up, don't bother with it. It just slows you down. And I should have remembered that. Okay, hydroponic growing medium. That will make it so you can produce more food. If you actually go into each of these research topics, it actually has a little story to go with it and explains how it does it, which I think is fantastic. Because, you know, it's one thing to just, okay, this increases that, but how does it do it? I like seeing the science behind it. With the original game, Outpost 1, they had a scientist leading the development. And so everything was extremely scientifically accurate, but they didn't balance that very well with actual gameplay that and that. So of course the game suffered as a result of it. And because the first one seemed so bad with that, the second one got a lot of people thinking, oh, well, this is just going to be another case of that. So while this game did have a lot of potential to be one of those huge hits out there that people will remember forever, it suffered enough bad press from its predecessor, that is, a prequel only in title. <clears throat> My throat's starting to get a little clogged up here. And because it suffered that bad reputation from its predecessor, it never really took off. Which is a real shame. He, this was produced by Sierra. They had support for it for a long time. And then one day they decided, oh, we're not going to even bother with this anymore. There's not enough people. They actually removed all traces of it from even their forums that had much older games still listed. So for a long time I was very anti Sierra because of that. That's just how my younger mind thought. Okay, scientist. Now you do have the option to just completely remove all the computing objectives from the view there. I don't like doing that because you know, I kind of think, well, where did this objective come from all of a sudden? But it was something that it sometimes gets outdated by the events of the game. For example, there's have enough evacuation transports for your population. If your population is growing, you're going to run out of space on the evacuation transports. That's another bad thing about talking to you when you're playing this game. You don't notice when the research is done. Another electrical storms. All I have to do now is the research and the metals, because the scientists are being trained right now. Let's see, one, two, three. Let's get four. Oh, shit, what just. That was the Robo Surveyor that just got destroyed. My food almost got destroyed. That's going to set me back a little bit. Oh boy. 
If you're not paying attention, this game can kick your ass. Oh. Mm, topographical move. A topographical view or normal view? Okay, there's a scientist. Now, if you ever research things and you want to know what they did and you didn't think to look at them, you can look through this menu, completed research, and it will list all the completed research. Oops. Dang it. Yeah, that button is no longer functional. It's an outdated button. But because, well, we can't really edit the game itself, so we can't lose that. That's a shame. Oh, on metals. How much is in there? Not enough. Okay, now I need to. I'm gonna have to stop that research. Uh, help maintenance, I believe. That will be pretty quick. And then emergency response system after that. Shoot, this is going to be very, very close. This one's going to be danger close. This is going to be whoa, crazy. Oh boy. <laughs> I can do it. I can do it this time. Oh no, 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 don't do that to me. No, that's going to throw a wrench in the works. This is going to be close. Okay, the scientist died, so I made that less. Ah, God, quit, make, quit breathing. <laughs> quit reproducing already, damn it. I can just disable that and then I won't be able to reproduce anymore. I also have to be careful that all the children don't become workers before I finish them. Oh boy, this is going to be very close. Very close indeed. What the hell is that voice? <laughs> okay. Load. And don't have time to research anything else while I cover that. Boom. <laughs> that honestly had me a bit nervous. Let's go ahead and say that. Uh, let me check how much how much time we've been recording for. Well, half an hour. Okay, I'm going to split this into two. I'm going to keep on recording. So I'll see you guys in a couple of seconds.